three times in the history of college. Paul Gamble. The name means a lot when set around Westminster College. The developer of an annual alumni fund, former campus historian, former editor of the college magazine, and author of two books about the college, just to name a few. I got to sit down and talk with Paul Gamble at his apartment at Shenango on the Green and got to look back on his days at Westminster College. He told me about the first edition of the history of the school, which chronicled the first century. I decided I would like to run a series of articles in the blue, in the blue and white the magazine. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was back in the letterpress days when your illustrations were on plates on mounted on wood and so on, quite a different time. But by saving the type and saving the cuts, I was able to turn out the history centennial time, the first history, Westminster's first century. Upon completion of this, Gamble was established as the college historian. Twenty-five years later, the committee asked Gamble for an update. So the second edition of the history is 1977, and uh, I was able to add some things. Uh, two things about the first history. I found I had sort of out, sort of shortchanged the academic program, and I was glad for a chance to fill in quite a bit of information about the academic program. As glamorous as the job of college historian may seem, Gamble explained to me that it was not just reporting on the history, but also making sure no one's toes were being stepped on. I had to sweep all controversies under the rug. <laughs> Dr. Orr took a, a dim view of the history. What was that? Dr. Orr had the idea that everybody that had been here before he came along had contributed to the mess that he inherited. It seems at the time of John Orr's arrival in the presidency, the ties between the faculty and administration have been extremely severed. The faculty and the board got sort of involved in some things I'm involving academic freedom. Okay. And uh, the board put one of their own in the front office to put things back in shape, which would mean the faculty would stick to the classroom and let the administration and the board run the college. During this tumultuous period, 26 out of a faculty of 52 left, including the president, the dean, and five department chairmen. At this time, the board was faced with a meltdown. In order to avoid chaos, John Orr was thrown in. John Orr was a religion professor. He was the head of the religion department, and he was acting dean, and they also made him acting president. He held things together for a couple of years till things got, well, on a more evil, even keel. Mm -hmm. but didn't really solve the problems. Yeah. Gamble says it sometimes got rough working under John Orr. He was a hard man to work for. Yeah. <laughs> I was working under him as alum alumni secretary for 11 years and then five more years as executive assistant to the president. Yeah. So I worked with him for 16 years. <laughs> I knew he was doing a bang-up job for the college and in my position I had to I had to support him or I had to quit, had to quit mm -hmm, yeah. one or the other. So I ended up pretty much supporting him. Okay. Gamble told me he's seen his share of manipulation within the school, but also told me what he deemed his most valuable contribution to the college was. After I retired, uh, the last 12 years I was in the English faculty. Okay. And uh, I think there's no question about what my most valuable contribution to the college was in developing the alumni program and the annual alumni fund. Oh, all right. It, it, I was very fortunate in being able to really go to town on that. Okay. While he contributed in such great factors and possessed almost infinite knowledge of the history of Westminster, Gamble told me what he enjoyed most about working here. I really like working with the students. Yeah. I was found myself sort of longing to get back in the classroom. So I took a, a 33% cut of salary to move from administration back to the classroom and never look back. Funny thing, he seemed to get along just about as well. And after Gamble retired, he 
He taught a seminar every three years or so on the history of the college. Every student had a project to chronicle the history of one aspect of the college. Each student had a project, like the history of May Days at Westminster mm -hmm. or girls volleyball. And I would tell them at the beginning of the term, you would have a chance over the next four weeks of becoming the world's leading authority on May Days at Westminster. Yeah. Or whatever it was. Needless to say, the reports varied in quality. <laughs> some of them were not very good, but some of them were really quite good. Mm -hmm. And in the archives, there was a file of these student papers. I'm Lee Biermeyer for WCN 24-7.